Dear colleagues, welcome to the closing session of a remarkable, outstanding World and Library Information Congress 2019. And of course, we have prepared an exciting program for you. But first of all, please welcome our president, Gloria Perez Salmeron, to the stage. Hola. Dear colleagues, my time as president comes to the end today, 29th of August, 2019. And this afternoon is my turn to say thanks. Thanks to all who have been ready to join me the conversation, to build the conversation, to drive the conversation. Because at its heart, IFLA is a global conversation about how to improve libraries and the lives of the users by meeting their access to information needs. I have many thoughts to tell you in my farewell speech but this is my statement to summarize my message as IFLA president. IFLA is with you, with all of you sitting in this hall, and with all librarians all over the world. <laughs> the global community of librarians. I know that being IFLA president is a great privilege. I'm sure that our fellow past president sitting in the first row will agree with me. Yes, it's an honor and a privilege. The privilege to be able to meet with so many members of the global library field, to be able to see your work, to talk with you about the present and the future of libraries, about what's important to you, about what do you need. Deep down, we know what is to be a librarian. What are the values that we share? Equality, freedom, justice, peace, and progress. The values that dialogue, that democracy is built on. I can confirm this. All the conversations I have had, the examples I have seen, there is so much evidence. But beyond shared values, I want to argue that there is also a shared sense of mission. A desire not just to defend what we have achieved, but to go further, to do more. Because we are not just a global community, you know. We are a global movement. My motto... <laughs> my motto as IFLA president is Libraries Motors of Change, you know already. With this, I wanted to share my belief, my conviction, that libraries can be an equalizer, a neighbor, a catalyst, a force for a better world. My experience has shown that I am far from my alone in my belief, that there is no lack of dedication, no lack of inspiration, no lack of action to turn this conviction into reality. Motors of change, I can say it very easily, I can say motors of change, but you are doing it. Millions of librarians driving progress. The foundations of the movement, as you can see, are in place. But we cannot stop here. We need to, go, to keep going, maintain the momentum, build the movement. To do so, it cannot only be the wall around us that we look to change. We need to look at our own mindsets, how we can think about what we are doing, how we can explore new opportunities, how we can work together, my dear president-elect. We are not businesses, but we need to be entrepreneurial, to be looking always for the opportunities to do more, to do better. We must welcome the new while making sure that we protect what's important from the past and the present. We need to be aware of what makes us special, but never forget that we are part of uh, what we serve, our communities, our societies. To draw on 
global expertise and inspiration to deliver local impact to improve both the way we do our own jobs and our ability to build partnerships with others. In the United, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, we have the perfect framework to doing this, a global call by all member states at the United Nations across all areas of the government's actions. From poverty to global partnerships, through agriculture, education, employment, innovation, and good governance. Targets, indicators, monitoring, an excellent way both to organize our own thinking, our own action, and to show it, important to show it. All with the approval of the commitment of governments. Crucially, the SDGs also underline the need for a new ways of thinking of doing. And this is not only governments that need to become more effective to make development happen, but everyone. We, librarians, must to do so also. It's the message to the global vision and the message I have emphasized as IFLA president. Because so many of the challenges we face from those which uh, global dimensions, climate change, epidemics, pollution, to those which may seem local but which are repeated from one community to the next around the world. These challenges require response, a positive, effective, engaged response from libraries. So, we all need to see the connections between issues, to refocus efforts, to commit to leaving no one behind. We need to take the commitment to access to information that brought so many of us into the profession and share it, convince those in power of it. It's not easy. We have, we all have our specialities, our type of libraries, our priorities, our habits, languages, time zones, current structures and practices can stand in the way, but it's necessary. And with confidence and optimism, we can make it. I have already said, I feel so privileged to have had the opportunity to lead IFLA together with the members of our governing board and the IFLA Secretary General in this special moment. IFLA's transformation, how nice to say this, IFLA's transformation. A real transformation focused on the future that needs a strong leader in command. Thank you, Gerald. You are making this transformation possible. All we, we all agree to you and thank you. I have so many great memories of this journey. I have seen so happy to be being the leader of a movement, encouraging librarians to step up their efforts to advocate to decision makers to ensure that they know how, by providing meaningful access to information to all, libraries are motors of a social change. It has been easy, an easy role for me to play because I'm absolutely convinced that we can change the lives of millions of people. To work to discuss how organized and empowered libraries can make a difference. How we cannot just adapt to, but stay ahead of trends. How we can build a strong national library fields with a strong relationships with decision makers and governments how we can take our place at the heart of policies and strategies to achieve the SDGs, how to can define and realize the IFLA global vision. I have had the honor to hold two president's meetings in Barcelona and in Buenos Aires, where I have been able to dig deeper into these ideas, to share the perspectives of experts around the world on libraries, on the role, now and in the future. 
to exchange with the great audiences to come up with great ideas, to accelerate our work to build a global library field able to deliver on the global vision. In my speeches, when I had been talking about IFLA's transformation, I described IFLA as being like an old lady, full of, of wisdom, strong in her convictions, but needed to support to work alone. This Im image has helped me to explain to our colleagues the change IFLA needs to make it itself, to take our, our wisdom, our values, and to realize our potential to work Unaid and indeed to help the library feel as a whole to work strong, to work tall and proud. Our new strategy, which I hope has inspired, engaged, enabled, and connected you all, is our way to making this happen. I can say IFLA is more alive than ever, better able to unite the library field to help it to face the challenges of globalization and turn them into opportunities to serve our users. Better able to just not meet user needs, but to advocate actively for access to information as an essential requirement for personal and societal, societal development. Better able to define the actions clear, innovative, effective actions that can carry out ourselves and with our partners in order to achieve our vision. Better able to show definitely that libraries are an investment, not a cost. The library field <laughs> The library field is amazing. You are amazing. I can only hope that I have given you the service that you and IFLA deserve. I will take a bit of water. It has been an intense time, but it has been also the most incredible, wonderful and inspiring time of my professional career. I have learned so much and still am learning from you my dear colleagues. Every day I'm learning from you. In my talks with librarians and associations, decision makers and partners, I have seen how much IFLA can do for them. How the IFLA global vision is just a starting point to creating a global movement. Once again, I want to thank my employer, Diputació de Barcelona, for its full support during my time at IFLA and for giving me the time to carry out my work. As anyone who has heard me speak about Barcelona knows, I am a key ambassador of my hometown. Thank you to FESAVIT, the Spanish Federation of Associations of Archivists, Librarians, Information Specialists, and Museologists, of which I also have been present twice. You provide me a great training for for my time in IFLA. Thanks to my wonderful family that has become larger by three more members these last three years, and my mom for her patience, infinite patience. <laughs> Thanks to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Global Lives Program Director, Deborah Jacobs, past president Donna Shida, and IFLA Secretary General, Gerald Leiner, my fellow travelers on the road of the IFLA's future. I have learned so much from you three, and I have made a lot of fun as well. Thanks to our four mothers of IFLA, Claudia Lux, Ellen Theis, Ingrid Parrain, Sinica Sipila, and Donna Shida. Thank you to my colleagues on the governing board, I'm glad that many of you will be served a second term, supporting Christine as the takes on of the presidency. You have been a great support to me. My best wishes to you all, both those we are, you are staying and those you are leaving. 
And finally, I thank all of you, my lovely IFLA staff. You are, your expertise and your commitment to our Federation is incredible. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Thanks to our Greek colleagues from the National Committee, to the all Greek librarians, to make this conference possible. Thanks. Thanks to our volunteers. You're so great. I would like to finish my speech with the wise words of Pompeo Fabra, a prominent Catalan engineer who lived very close to my home in Badalona, where he worked intensely on the Catalan language and grammar. When he finished his incredible work, he said, Cal no abandonar mai ni la tasca ni l'esperança, which in English means we must abandon neither our labors nor our hopes. <laughs> Some Catalan there. So let's follow his advice and work together to continue our important task to deliver the best for our future. We have turned in a nation started the motors of social change. Now we must create a global movement in order to bring meaningful access to information for all. I wish Christine Mackenzie, my successor, all the best in his task, in her task. So hasta luego. See you later. I thank you. Oh, Gloria, what a speech. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I have now the honor and the privilege to thank you, Gloria, to thank you, Gloria, on behalf of IFLA's governing board, to thank you on behalf of IFLA's staff, to thank you on behalf of uh, IFLA's professional units, and I, think, uh, and I think I can thank you on behalf of the global library community. And I want to thank you for an exceptional presidency. You came in in a defining moment of IFLA's history and it became a defining moment because of your leadership. We went from vision to strategy during your presidency and we wouldn't have reached all these goals without your leadership and without your support. You have cheered us up when we need it. You have inspired us, you have supported us, you were an incredible president, and we will never forget you. So many thanks, Gloria. And now, next highlight. I invite Aisa Dejodori, Chair of the Professional Committee, to present the Committee's Award for 2019. Please, Aisa, join me.
Thank you, Daryl, and thank you, Gloria. Dear colleagues, IFLA's Professional Committee coordinates the activities of the professional units in IFLA. That is, the work of all the many excellent, enthusiastic, and dedicated professionals from all over the world that work in the sections, core activities, review groups, and special interest groups. They have helped to produce the inspiring program of sessions and meetings this week and the satellite meetings that have taken place or are about to take place. Their work, you know, goes beyond what they do for the Congress. They continue throughout the year to produce guidelines, standards, advocacy materials, newsletters, books, and online discussion, and deliver workshops, seminars, webinars, and a wide range of diverse projects and activities. The effort and dedication of these people is very much appreciated by us all, and it makes it a pleasure for me and my colleagues on the professional committee to work with them. Let me say that serving and sharing the professional committee in these last two years has been for me a privilege and an incredible learning experience, both as a professional and as an individual. To recognize the vital contribution of work of the professional units, IFLA's professional committee launched in the IFLA Dynamic Unit and Impact Award in 2018. Now, in its second year, this award recognizes the success of IFLA's professional unit in achieving the expectations of a dynamic unit as defined by the professional committee. All IFLA professional units are eligible to nominate for the award. The nominations that were submitted to the professional committee this year identified very qualified candidates, each of them demonstrating the increasing quality of the work carried out by IFLA units, and each one showing deep dedication to the global library world. We hope that next year more units will be nominated and we will be able to share the progress and good work that they are doing in support of IFLA's mission and of the libraries they represent from all over the world. Submissions have been evaluated against a number of criteria, including quality and impact of the work, communication strategy, as well as membership and leadership engagement and development. Every nominated unit showed strengths, assets, and developments matching these criteria. In order to highlight their value and achievements, the professional committee therefore recognizes, together with the prize awarded to the winning IFLA unit, a special mention to two other units. We have certificates for the two special mentions which they can collect at the end of the ceremony. So, the first unit awarded with a special mention is being recognized for its strong committee who has shown good planning, effective communication and advocacy skills, and the focus on building diverse membership and partnerships. I am therefore happy to announce that a special mention for communication and advocacy has been awarded to the knowledge management section. Congratulations. Warm congratulations to the knowledge management section. And the second unit awarded with a special mention is being recognized for its achievements towards building effective collaboration and partnerships within and beyond IFLA in order to strengthen their era of the profession and support access to knowledge and information across the world. I am therefore happy to announce that a special mention for partnership and collaboration has been awarded to the Law Library section. Congratulations. <laughs> and now, it is time to announce the winner of the EFLA Dynamic and Impact Dynamic Unit, sorry, and the Impact Award 2019. The winning unit 
is vibrant and active, it has met all the expectations of a dynamic unit. It shows a robust and inclusive planning process, leading to professional development and to a wide range of initiatives and events, including their annual award. It has built a strong collaborative approach within and beyond IFLA, matched by a clear and effective communication strategy which includes an active social media presence and good publishing activities. So the winner of the 2019 IFLA Dynamic Unit and the Impact Award is the Library, Buildings and Equipment Section. I ask I ask Diane Cohen, Chair of the Library, Buildings and Equipment Section, to come forward and accept this award on behalf of her unit. So now, another award. The best IFLA Poster 2019 award. On behalf of the professional committee, I will now announce the award. You know that posters are a different and engaging opportunity to present new ideas, projects, and initiatives, and to show and discuss them at the Congress with colleagues from all countries and library types. A very high number of proposals were received by IFLA this year, and many of them were selected to be presented during the Congress. Probably many of you have seen them, and they were really beautiful. The jury for selecting the winner of the best IFLA Poster 2019 award was comprised of IFLA Professional Committee and Governing Board Member Antonia Arahova, IFLA Governing Board Member Agnes Hoidu Borat and the representative for the, from the IFLA Professional Units, Rana Abdul Rahman from the Art Library section. Thank you for your work. The jury acknowledges the high quality of the posters presented this year, which combine substantive ideas and content with clear and appealing design. The task of the jury members was, has surely not been an easy one, and I really thank them on behalf of the professional committee for the work they've done. So two runners-up and a winner have been identified. The first place, third place for the best IFLA poster 2019 goes to poster number 102, Libraries and Climate Consciousness from Sweden. The second place for the best IFLA poster 2019 goes to poster number five, Library Makeover, the Sanctuary of the Mind, Malaysia. And now the winner. The winner of the best IFLA poster 2019 is poster number 37, Every Good Adaptation is also an Innovation, from Lithuania. <laughs> the 
This innovative poster shows how a makerspace in libraries can be a bridge between the traditional library and emerging technologies. The content of the poster is clear and succinct. The colorful graphic elements are well chosen, modern and of high quality. The technology used to present the concept reflects the advancement of libraries. So is Donata Kubilius present so to come to the stage and accept this award? Where? Oh, so far. Thank you to everyone. It has been wonderful being here. Thank you so much, Raisa, and congratulations to all our award recipients. Each year at the World and Library Information Congress, EFLOG presents the scroll of appreciation to the Congress National Committee to acknowledge our gratitude to them for hosting our Congress. We have enjoyed a wonderful Congress here in Athens and I now invite Christina Kyriakopoulou, Dr. Filippos Timpogolo and Alexandra Papotsokolo, co-chairs of the IFLA Greek National Committee, to please join the President at the stage. The EFLO scroll of appreciation is also awarded to members who have given distinguished services to EFLA. And EFLA also presents a scroll of appreciation to Jeannie Drews. In grateful recognition for her distinguished contribution to EFLA and international librarianship, particularly in the field of preservation and conservation. As Jeannie Drews is an passionate advocate for libraries. She left us all already to the ICOM conference to Japan, and she's unable to be here with us today. Please welcome Jack Nadal, Director of Preservation at the Library of Congress, to the stage to receive the scroll of appreciation on her behalf. Gloria.
Ifla also presents a scroll of appreciation to Stephen W. Witt in grateful recognition for his extensive contribution to IFLA and engagement in international librarianship, particularly in the field of research and publication. Please welcome Stephen W. Witt to the stage to receive the scroll of appreciation. The Evla Medal is awarded to a person or organization that has made a distinguished contribution either to Evla or to international librarianship. The Evla Medal is awarded to Kay Elkhorn. Kai Ekholm is past national librarian at the National Library of Finland. Kai is recognized for his achievements and influence in advocating for freedom of speech and people's right to cultural heritage. Kai has been involved with IFLA since 2003 and served as chair of the Faith Freedom of Access to Information and Freedom of Expression Advisory Committee from 2009 to 2000. 13. During this period, the committee became an important source of statements, insights, and publications. He oversaw the major project to collect library codes of ethics from around the world and to develop IFLA's own code in 2012. In the area of cultural heritage, he has led work on copyright and the legal needs of libraries when providing access to cultural works and tackled inno innovative subjects such as digital unification. Ivla has benefited significantly from his energy, insight, and engagement. Thank you so much, Kai, for your work. And I ask now the president to give you the medal. Dear all, freedom of speech is an interesting concept. It's basically empty until put to test. We witness every day how it's being tested in printed media, in social media, in our private and professional lives. How about libraries? Are they just institutions that monitor what is happening outside them? Do, do they have a mission and will of their own? Of course they have. The famous book historian Alberto Mangel states, without hospitals, schools and libraries, there is no society. Libraries make an essential building block for the freedom of any society. As we have seen every day, there is no autopilot for the freedom of speech. It's put to test every day, every moment. It needs arguments, support, and brave individuals to stand up and speak for it. Therefore, I would like to dedicate this IFLA medal to the faith theme I was privileged to work with. Barbara Jones, 
Stuart Hamilton, Lloyd Garcia, Theo Bothma, Shoki Salem, Päiviki Karhula, Philip Kolamp, Herman Rösch, and Yeshua Inoue. It was a tremendous group of highly professional and enthusiastic people. Please give them a hand. I thank you all and IFLA for this prestigious acknowledgement. I will treasure it for a very, very long time. The IFLA Medal 2019 is also awarded to Barbara Schleihagen. Barbara Schleihagen has been involved with IFLA since 1997 and served on the Faith Committee, the IFLA Governing Board, and on the management of Library Association sections from 2011 to 2017, of which she was a very, very successful chair from 2015 to 2017. With her experience as the executive director of the German Library Association, Barbara was intensively involved in the development of the Building Strong Libraries program. She has been very supportive of the new professional special interest group and the need to attract young professionals to the work of associations and IFLA. Barbara's service to IFLA in the area of financial administration and organization has been exceptional, particularly during her time as IFLA treasurer from 2009 to 2011. Barbara has a deep understanding of the importance of libraries within societies and is able to influence decision makers in a credible way. She shares her expertise with colleagues and IFLA has been the fortunate recipient of her energy, expertise, and passion for libraries. Many thanks for all what you have done to IFLA. I ask now our president to give you the IFLA medal. Madam President, Secretary General, dear all, I'm deeply grateful and feel very honored that IFLA offers this award to me. I'm convinced that we can only grow and thrive, personally as well as professionally, through the interaction and in relationship with others. Therefore, there are many people that I would like to acknowledge and thank for their support and encouragement. Alas, time is too short, and therefore I will recognize only a few representing all the others. Tula Harvisto, at that time Secretary General of the Finnish Library Association, introduced me to IFLA by inviting me to present a paper on how to lobby for libraries in Europe at the IFLA conference in Copenhagen in 1997. Thank you, Tula. My active engagement in IFLA began in the core activity IFLA Faith. During several years, I was privileged to work closely with wonderful colleagues such as Paul Sturges, Stuart Hamilton, Bob McKee, and Susan Seidelin. Sadly, 
the latter two are no longer with us. Our regular meetings, some at Humphrey's restaurant in The Hague, were full of serious debate, but also joy and laughter. They made me fully realize of how crucial this core value is for our profession, to ensure free access to information, and in this way, to contribute to freedom of expression. This core value, however, can only be implemented in real library work in a society where freedom of information is guaranteed. And this is why we as librarians need to be alert and active whenever this freedom is endangered or attacked. And this is why we need IFLA to raise its voice on behalf of library users all over the world. The Management of Library Association section became my true home in IFLA. In my 10 years of active involvement, we worked hard to empower our association fellows. And probably the most valuable gift in this respect was the creation of the Building Strong Library Associations program with financial support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It was most fulfilling to be able to contribute my experiences and knowledge of library association work to the learning modules. It still fills my heart with joy to see what a difference this program made in so many countries, empowering library associations to better support their libraries, to better serve their users. And in all those years, Barbara Lison was there for me in various positions and in various library associations, giving good advice as a colleague and listening as a friend. Danke, Barbara. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to the two most important men in my life. First, I thank my husband, who always patiently awaits my return from travels and picks me up at airports and railway stations, even at very unsocial hours. <laughs> thank you, Bernhard. <laughs> Thank you, Bernhard, for never complaining that I'm often not there with you to celebrate your birthday on 25th August because I'm attending our annual IFLA conference. And last but not least, I thank my father who died almost 20 years ago. He was the one who instilled the pleasure of reading in me. Being a hardworking man, he often came home very late. But at rare and precious occasions, he would sit down, open the light brown linen-covered book with that special smell, and read aloud Grimm's fairy tales to my sister and me, once upon a time. He was the one, he was the one who took me to our local library and thus opened up a whole new work to me, which became the center of my professional life. Thank you, pups, wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you. Honorary Fellow is EFLA's highest award. Honorary Fellowship may be given on a person who has delivered long and distinguished service to EFLA with outstanding achievement and this has brought distinction to EFLA in the international arena. On behalf of EFLA, I'm delighted to present the EFLA Honorary Fellow to Deborah Jacobs. Deborah, may I please ask you to join us on the stage? Through her leadership and belief in librarians as agents of change in society, Deborah Jacobs 
has had a profound effect on the transformation of public library services globally and on IFLA as an organization. As city librarian at the Seattle Public Library, Deborah was a remarkable leader establishing new services, mentoring staff, and developing skills as an outstanding fundraiser. At this time, she was involved with IFLA as a member of IFLA's Metropolitan Library Services. Deborah was able to multiply her impact when she was appointed director of the Global Libraries Program at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The Global Libraries Program provided the platform to spark innovation in libraries in developing and in other countries. Networks of inspired librarians have connected nationally and regionally to share knowledge and enthusiasm. The international network of emerging library innovators, INELI program, was a powerful manifestation of Deborah's passion for encouraging and supporting the next generation of library leaders to explore new ideas experiment with innovative services and learn from one another. Libraries around the world have benefited from Deborah's belief that IFLA had the necessary connections and reach to substantially impact the library field. The IFLA Building Strong Library Associations Program, BSLA, was funded through a grant from the Global Libraries Program and allowed selected national associations to collaborate on capacity building activities and strengthen their understanding of issues across the region. It gave them the capacity to build the skills and strategy needed to tell the story of libraries and gain policymakers' support. From 2008 to 2017, grants totaling over 5 million euros were provided to support the most impactful and far-reaching of EFLA's programs, including the Action for Development for Libraries program and the International Advocacy program. The International Advocacy program aimed to promote and support the role libraries can play in the planning and implementation of the United Nations 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. The program provided many national associations with the foundation for advocacy efforts with governments and other stakeholders. And now here, IFLA was identified by the Global Libraries Program as one of the three legacy partners. Organizations who would receive a substantial financial legacy to continue work that kept the library field strong. The, labor, the legacy grant of over $30 million, of over $30 million has en enabled the reframing of IVLA as an organization and will allow the Federation to extend its reach further than ever before. IFLA aims to build on Deborah's patience for collaboration and new ways of thinking to inspire the global library field to act together to face the challenges of the future. Deborah Jacobs has been an inspiration, a champion and an advocate for the development of libraries in countries all over the world. She has worked tirelessly in the political and strategical sphere to influence politicians and decision makers to invest in libraries. She is passionate about libraries, their values and the difference that libraries can make to society. Deborah Jacobs' outstanding leadership and exceptional support of EFLA and libraries in the international arena make her a worthy recipient of EFLA's highest honor of honorary fellow. Thank Congratulations, you. Laura. Congratulations. Thank you. Dear President Gloria Perez Salmoron, President elect Christine McKenzie, the IFLA Executive Committee, who uh, 
who selected this, wonderful people who contributed to my nomination, and to all of you in the audience who are, and those who are watching online, thank you for this huge honor. And I forgot to thank the Secretary General. <laughs> <laughs> this is a remarkable moment in my life in so many ways. I am happy and healthy and living in my new home with my wonderful wife and my two crazy dogs. My son Jacob is strong and happy and in love. And I have a huge global circle of friends, loving, kind friends everywhere in the world. Life is great. And then I woke up on May 1st to an email informing me that I had been, I had been awarded the IFLA Honorary Fellowship. I quickly shut my computer down, thinking it was a mistake, and then opened it again. Wow, it was true. I think of this as an award that goes to other people, to big people. And for me, I question my right to be among all of you who have been my friends and mentors. And I'm so proud to now be associated with you in this way. I also realized that my largest contribution to IFLA was only possible due to Bill and Melinda Gates's commitment to and for funding, public li for funding libraries of all types. And while I always had a lot of ideas and energy, this contribution was brought to life by the passionate and powerful staff of Global Libraries and of IFLA, as well as IFLA's past presidents, uh, Donna and current president, Gloria, and the very engaged governing board. That was the beginning of transparency, putting that grant together. And then, of course, to my deputy director, Jessica Dorr, and our secretary general, Gerald Leitner. I had a vision. But a vision is nothing without staff and partners. In 2014, I announced to the library field that the 20-year Global Libraries program was winding down. However, with the decision to exit the field, Bill and Melinda Gates continued to honor the power of libraries by asking us to leave the library field strong. As we thought about how to approach this, we knew that a strong library field is dependent on libraries, library organizations, and associations working in a unified and aligned way. And we knew that to do this, IFLA had to be involved in a major way and needed to partner with a handful of other key legacy partners, including IFL and the Public Library Association of the US and others. When Gerald was hired, frankly, it was a game changer, not just for IFLA, but for global libraries and the library field. He brought vision combined with action, fast, furious, and continuous action. And his vision was aligned with our belief in global libraries that the only way to have a strong library field to have libraries recognized as a key factor in a community's success and to be funded as key community assets that we are, is to work in an aligned and unified way. The success of the global vision effort that you and thousands of others participated in and IFLA's transformation to becoming a truly inclusive and transparent organization gives me confidence in the future of libraries. But IFLA headquarters isn't IFLA, as everyone's been saying, and they can't do this alone. You are IFLA. Gerald said that continuously in our early work in the vision when people said, what's IFLA gonna do about this? We are IFLA. And it's gonna be important that you all stand up and step up and, and get to work. My life motto, as I talked about in President Gloria's Perez Salmaran's session is, when a good community comes together, good things happen. IFLA is a great community. And in keeping with President-elect Christine McKenzie's theme of let's work together, I believe we can make anything happen. Because as libraries are strengthened, the world is strengthened too. My promise to all of you 
and to IFLA is that I take this honor seriously and I will work side by side with all of you to ensure that what is happening now continues and that the legacy grant is not funding a 10-year effort but will create permanent and lasting change. Thank you so much. I'm so honored. On behalf of IFLA, I'm delighted to present the IFLA Honorary Fellow to my master, Donna Shida. <laughs> Donna Shida, you know that you have to come to the stage. <laughs> I cannot ask you. It's too high. <laughs> it's for the leaders. An outstanding ability to connect with people coupled with drive and energy have marked Donna Shida as a professional force in the library field. She has employed her gifts as a natural leader, strategic thinker, organizational expert, and articulated focus person to lead the transformation of Evla. Donna's first encounter with Evla began when she became the first leader from the Libraries of Congress Congressional Research Service to engage with Evla's library and research services for parliament sections. As a member of the section, she helped to organize satellite meetings and advocate for the increased involvement of special libraries in the fabric of Evla. As a past president of the Special Libraries Association in the United States, Donna understood the challenges for and impact of the sector of the library profession. Donna was involved in a number of EFLA governing board advisory groups formed in the early part of the 21st century to examine EFLA's governance and move the federation to one that engaged more with members and was transparent in its programmatic and organizational development. She served on the EFLA governing board from 2009 to 2017, continuing to influence EFLA's development. Donna played an active role in EFLA's advocacy around the agreement of the United Nations 2030 Agenda successfully helping to achieve the significant decision to include access to information as a target under Sustainable Development Goal 16. This accomplishment provided a globally accepted springboard and the common language for IFLA and libraries around the world to advocate to stakeholders and governments to support the role of libraries in society. As president of IFLA, a call to action was her presidential theme, and she traveled the globe encouraging libraries to act, to speak up, and to ensure the voice of libraries were heard and their views considered. Always clear and forthright in expressing her own views, Donna has been very open to the ideas and experiences of others, a valuable, critical leader in an organization comprising members from many cultures. During her tenure, 
EFLA's international advocacy program helped library associations and library communities become more powerful advocates and the first development and access to information report became a key resource for advocacy efforts. Donna's focus has been on the need to act, change, and adapt to an evolving world. As president, she led the discussions of EFLA's future directions, which culminated in the finalization of the substantial legacy grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. EFLA's transformation and willingness to evolve is a result of Donna Shida's influence on strategic decisions taken during her time on the governing board. EFLA and the international field is fortunate to have benefited from her leadership, one full of energy, passion and enthusiasm. Donna Shida's impact on libraries around the world and on EFLA as an organization qualify her as a worthy recipient of EFLA's highest honor of honorary fellow. Donna, may I invite you to address the delegates, Congratulations, please. Donna. Yeah. I will believe it. Well, hello, Ifla. <laughs> and thank you very much. This means so much to me. It was 50 years ago yesterday that I began my career at the Library of Congress. It was BC, before computers. <laughs> the phrase, may you live in interesting times, has been attributed to an old Chinese curse. Well, I have had a career in interesting times, and I count that as a blessing. And the most interesting time of all has been the time that I have worked with you at IFLA. We are IFLA. It is a we are a living, breathing network of dedicated librarians who are creating, innovating, and sharing our knowledge so that everyone on the planet has the chance to lead a useful, productive, and happy life. When we see things wrong in the world, whether it is homelessness or intolerance, illiteracy, or any of the many other afflictions in society, we do the best we can with what we have for as long as we can to combat these wrongs. You make me proud to be part of this profession, for I can say this now over 50 years. It is very tempting to take you all on a trip down IFLA memory lane, but I am going to choose instead to talk about the future. I am very grateful for this award because it recognizes together we have brought IFLA forward. Our voice is louder, our value more recognizable, and we are bolder in our resolve to make a difference. IFLA is a more innovative, connective, and stronger than we ever have been up to this point. To, to have you recognize my part in making this happen means so much to me that really there are no words to adequately express it. It takes a village, though, to make an IFLA fellow. Both my colleagues in ALA and SLA have been a joy to work with and play with at IFLA meetings, and I want to thank both organizations for their ongoing support and encouragement. And certainly, I owe my deep thanks to Dan Mulholland, who got me started in IFLA, by choosing me to represent the service in the section on libraries and research services to parliaments and also to the many colleagues and close friends I made there. You are my home in IFLA, and you gave me confidence when you chose me to lead the section that we could accomplish great things together. I have served on five IFLA governing boards and with three outstanding secretary generals, all of whom I learned from, and without that knowledge gained over the years, I would not be standing here today. Special thanks to you, Gerald Leitner, and it is also the icing on the cake to be receiving this award with Deborah Jacobs, who I had the excellent and good fortune to work closely with during my four years as president-elect and president. Congratulations, Deborah. I have also been extremely fortunate over the years to have colleagues who are friends and mentors, 
And I especially want to thank Jane Dysart for providing me with opportunities to grow and flourish in my profession. And finally, there is a most valuable player at home whom very few have ever met, but who always has been in my corner to listen, offer advice and counsel, and encouragement to tackle whatever challenges I faced. So thank you, Peter Waldron. IFLA is fortunate to have a long line of presidents and governing boards who build on the work done by their predecessors. And without their work, we would not be at this place in time that offers so much opportunity. I am especially grateful to Claudia Lux, who stressed the need for advocacy and put libraries on the agenda. To Ellen Ties, whose theme, Libraries Driving Access to Knowledge, positioned libraries to be part of decision maker solutions to societal problems. To Ingrid Perrant, who inspired me by giving us the first Jeffrey Trend report, which provided the foundation for understanding the changes in society that needed our response. And to Seneca Sipula, whose libraries, Strong Libraries, Strong Societies theme created a vision of where she thought we could go in order to be seen as valuable. Libraries A Call to Action gave us a framework to build the change agenda to get us there, and Gloria inspired us as individuals to see ourselves as the center of changes for our society. And now we look to Christine McKenzie for the next, for the next step in IFLA's forward motion. But there is still so much work to do. We have a vision and a strategic plan that needs to be implemented. We have an organization that needs to grow. And while this award is a lovely way to say thank you for my contributions, the best thing you can do to thank me is to charge ahead and to work hard to make our vision and our plan a reality. All of us now are contributing to ideas in the idea store and stories to the library map of the world. But that alone is not enough. We must use these tools. We must find the ideas in the store that will improve our service for our community and implement them. And we must tell the stories we collect, and not just to decision makers, but also to our friends, our neighbors, our community organizations, and raise their awareness of how libraries can change people's lives. The real thank you for me will be your success in achieving our goals. And as Pele, the great soccer player, said, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. So thank you for this re recognition. I wish all of you success in everything you do. And thank you for making me proud to say that I am a part of this wonderful global movement called IFLA. Thank you. We would, we would now like to thank our outgoing governing board members and acknowledge their outstanding leadership and achievements over the last two years. I ask to join the president on our stage, Huan Wen Chang, please. <clears throat> Mava El San. Agnes Haju Barat. Barbara Lison.
Patrick Losinski cannot join us today, but he did an exceptional job, I want to say. Torbjörn Nilsson, please. Victoria Okoche. Victoria Ohm. And unfortunately, Viviana Kuranas cannot join us today. Knut Schulz, please, join us. Vicky McDonald. Anne Ockerson. Maya Zuma. Soeli Mara Soares Pinto Ferreira. Michael Dowling. Raisa Theodori. And Christine McKenzie. And where I see our Greek colleague Tonia Herova. Yeah. Thank you to all, you all for standing contribution to IFLA and the library field in these two years. I, IFLA will never forget you, me also not, absolutely not. And we hope you can continue to be involved in some way in the future. Thank you very much. Yes, so many thanks. And now the future begins. I would like to introduce you to the governing board for 2019 to 2021. Please join me on the stage. Antonia Aharova. <clears throat> Ai Cheng Tai. <clears throat> Huan Wang Cheng. Michael Dowling. <laughs> Maba El San. Jonathan Perez. <laughs> Gorbjörn Nilsson. Sueli Mara Suarez Pinto Ferreira. 
Knut Schulz. Mina van Zanzen. Sonja Paulin. Helen Vincent. Echoa Boateng. Katharina Eisberg. Sanchai Koma Bihani. Hallo Locha. Vicky McDonald. Barbara Lison, our President elect 2019 to 2021. And of course, our incoming President, Christine McKenzie, President IFLA is an exciting time where excellent leadership is extremely needed. We are confident that we will reach our ambitious goals with your leadership. The WIC WOW is awarded to a person who shared the most inspiring social media post on Facebook or Twitter and demonstrated the benefits of attending IFLA Library, World Library and Information Congress to our wider audience. We had over 100 of Lick WOW entries. Thank you to everyone for sharing your WOWs. They, are, they were all really inspiring. The Vlik Wow winner is Bersiad Utepal Yavaya. Is she in here? I guess she communicates outside with Yvla Wow, I would say. <laughs> Just some words to her, even when she's not in. After a careful review of all tweets, Facebook and Instagram posts, our communication jury has selected a series of, uh, of wow messaging the best meets our criteria for this year's award. This crea creative and thoughtful reflection captured the heart of our Congress. Congratulations on winning a free registration to the Congress next year in Dublin.
So. Our award winners at Routh, which will be in Dublin, Ireland next year. So we're coming now to the IFLA World Library Information Congress Passport. The VLIC Passport competition was created to encourage active engagement with the exhibition. The winner of the free registration to the World Library Information Congress 2020 is Samuel Oldeyunova Oldeyemi from South Africa. Great, congratulations, and we look forward to seeing you in Dublin next year. At this point, I am pleased to announce the location of the IFLA World Library and Information Congress in 2021. I guess it's the top secret of our Congress. <laughs> in 2021, we will be meeting in, you will be very surprised, in Rotterdam, Netherlands. <laughs> I now invite the Dutch National Committee to make their presentation here on stage. Thank you very much. We are so proud and happy to be here, completely according to the EFLA strategy, we want to inspire, connect, enable, and to engage. We are talking about you, of course, our guests in Rotterdam, the global library community, but far more important, we want to affect our patrons, our users, the people who make our hearts tick, the people who really need us to improve their chances to become and stay connected to their communities and the world. We started two years ago on working on our bid. Making a winning bid is an enormous and especially joint effort. And I want to thank everyone who collaborated on this project so far, especially my fellow members of the Dutch National Committee, they're all standing here, and Rotterdam Partners, but also the conference organizers kit, the IFLA governing board, thank you very much, and the Secretary General, Gerald Leitner, for their trust in our efforts and enthusiasm. Words can say a lot, but pictures and words can almost say it all. We would like to present to you the WIC 2021 in the Netherlands, and especially in the beautiful welcoming city of Rotterdam on a different way. We hope to see you all and all of your colleagues in Rotterdam in 2021. You won't regret it. And to quote our new IFLA president, Christine McKenzie, let's work together on our goals, visions, strategy and actions to make the world better. Let's work together in Rotterdam. A city bursting with energy and creativity. Young, dynamic, sparkling and diverse. Rotterdam is where everybody wants to be. 
Following in the footsteps of the famous Rotterdam-born philosopher, scholar, and humanist Desiderius Erasmus, we encourage discussions and critical thinking to bring informed citizens closer together. At the heart of all the action, immersed in the vibrant city, stands the Rotterdam Public Library, one of the largest cultural institutions in the Netherlands. The Rotterdam Public Library is a treasure trove for scholars and library officers from all over the world. Its vaults contain the world's largest Erasmus collection. His books have had a profound effect on the free society we live in today. And even though Erasmus lived 500 years ago, his ideas are still extremely valuable to us today. Not only in Rotterdam and the Netherlands, but also throughout the world. Erasmus wrote about freedom, respect, and the importance of language and education. He believed that true progression requires people to discuss their ideas, give each other room to think. Ultimately, this will result in better societies. Erasmus is also present in the name and values of the Erasmus University, with its impressive University Library, which was recently completely rebuilt to match the needs of students and scholars for years to come. Dutch libraries function as a platform for reading, education, inspiration, discussion and ideas. Our country has a lively community of library professionals who work together to build better libraries. The National Library of the Netherlands, the KB, has already been a source of inspiration and innovation for centuries. Its mission is to make the National Library collection visible, usable and sustainable for all Dutch people and for ensuring that everyone is able to read, learn and conduct research. Already, 33% of the Dutch population is reached by its digital services. To accomplish these aims, the National Library collaborates intensively with partners in the domains of cultural heritage, academics and public libraries. Together we make the Netherlands smarter, more competent and more creative. Erasmus would have loved it. So where is this bustling city? Rotterdam is the second largest city in the Netherlands, the gateway to Europe and an international hub of trade and innovation. Bombarded in the Second World War, the place had to be rebuilt from scratch, and its people did so with pride and resilience. With a rapidly growing, diverse population made up of over 170 nationalities, Rotterdam is never short of fresh thinking and cross-border innovation. Today, Rotterdam ranks among the most popular destinations worldwide. People from all over the world flock to experience our amazingly diverse and ever-changing city. Rotterdam is honored to host the IFLA World Library and Information Congress of 2021. Welcome. 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 Welcome in Rotterdam. Yeah, congratulations again to Rotterdam and our Dutch colleagues. I'm 100% sure we will have an exciting Congress in Rotterdam and you will see the country which hosts IFLA's headquarters. That is really a place to go, I would say. But before we will go to Rotterdam, we will go to one of the most exciting cities in the world. Yeah. We will go to Dublin, Ireland. I guess for all who like literature, libraries, Dublin is a very special place and we will celebrate a great IFLA conference there. And I'm really honored 
that I have now the pleasure to invite Her Excellency, Mrs. Ola Ohanhara, Irish Ambassador to Greece, and Ms. Michelle Ryan, Cultural Attaché at the Irish Embassy to Greece, to the stage. Please come to our President. Thank you, Geralt, um, and thank you, Madam President, Gloria. Kalisperasas, um, Kiries Kakiri. And in our own language, the Aiva Gunushla. You may learn a few words of Irish next year, but we have plenty on Team Ireland here to, to teach you. Um, as someone who's had the privilege of being Irish ambassador to the Hellenic Republic uh, to Greece for the past two years, it's a real pleasure to come here to the famous Megaron venue. May I take this opportunity as great friends of our Greek hosts at every aspect of life here in Athens and beyond to congratulate the Greek host committee and all who have organized this wonderful, impressive conference. I had the privilege of being here with the President of Ireland in the Megaron just 18 months ago at a state visit where he spoke very passionately about his commitment to the arts, to literature and beyond, and I have no doubt that our President will wish to do the same next year. I congratulate too our Dutch colleagues and friends. Uh, we actually share a, an embassy building with the Embassy of the Netherlands, just not far from here, so we look forward to sharing all this good news tomorrow. In fact, if maybe you stay on in Dublin, it's quite a short sail uh, over to Rotterdam. You could maybe just stay on. And <laughs> um, I would just like to say uh, it is my great pleasure to accept this incredible honour for Dublin and for Ireland. And it is my great pleasure to formally invite you all to the World Library and Information Congress in Dublin next August. As I mentioned, we have a great friendship here on the other side of Europe with Greece, but also an enormous diaspora across the world and in the over 140 countries represented in this auditorium this evening. I feel sure that there is an Irish community somewhere that you know in each of your countries and will hopefully help you prepare for your visit to Ireland. It is, uh, it, there are many experts I know here from, uh, from academic life and elsewhere, and I'm sure many of them know about the Ptolemy map but uh, if we were to draw one from the two peripheries of Europe, we would see that Ireland and Greece may be far apart in the European Union, but we are both extremely committed members of the European Union and passionate about our European identity now more than ever before. We are a small nation with a big literary heritage. And Dublin, our capital, is a UNESCO city of literature. Writing and storytelling is part of the lifeblood of our country. And we are proud, of course, that it is also the birthplace of four Nobel laureates for literature. Um, our literary tradition also continues with contemporary Irish writing, uh, some of whom have won the Man Booker Prize in the last 15 years. I hope that when you visit Ireland, you will have a chance to experience some of that history, past and present. Dublin, as, as I know as a Dubliner myself, is a city of libraries. Uh, we have over 350 public libraries. We have universities represented and, like all of you here, two parliamentary institutions. Um, the Irish uh, team, which I'm proud of here on my right, uh, has much to share with you. And, of course, um, the uh, President, Marianne, along with uh, Philip Cahill and the other members of the team, will be able to tell you much about our own library history stemming from 1928, just a little younger than the, 
than the age of the modern Irish state. Um, it is home in Dublin and in Ireland to some of the most well-used libraries in the world. And I hope, as uh, showing a little bias on my part, that you will visit my own old University of Trinity College, which is the, stems from the 16th century, and also Marsh's Library, and I'm sure many other older and contemporary libraries when you come. We are proud of their special place in our history and equally proud of the important place that public libraries have played in our modern state. And coming here today uh, at a personal level, uh, it made me reflect a little about the role not only of our public libraries, uh, but for all of those I have mentioned, but particularly perhaps in the public library for each and every citizen, whether from Ireland, Greece, or much further afield in the countries you represent. Um, I hope I will be forgiven, uh, but maybe uh, to mention that we had a very special time in our own uh, foreign service lives in the United States. And I spent uh, some years in Boston, uh, where there are a few Irish, and, and also in, in Washington, D.C. more recently, where, of course, I had the great privilege of knowing the, to visit the Library of Congress and, and the extraordinary uh, system that is alive going back many years, indeed, in the United States. It brought back memories of uh, the Boston Public Library and our own neighborhood library from the time that our children, now adults, were very small and seeing how in the local community the space for the library was not only welcoming for children but also multi-generational. Those young children are now well into their 20s but I hope still have an appreciation and remember uh, even then going back about 20 years I have an abiding memory of the arrival of, of computers into their public school in Massachusetts an early portent, perhaps, of the challenges ahead that you are all meeting today of the emergence between technology and the library world. Uh, it's also a multi-generational space. Uh, as well as being a driver of public policy and social policy, it's multi-generational. So it may be, hopefully, where we still introduce our children to the world of books, but it's also a place where the local library can offer my 89-year-old mother a place to find a book with large print. So it really is quite unique, I think, in terms of the space that it occupies in our personal lives. When you go to Dublin, and I heard many recognitions there very rightly for knowledge management, uh, Dublin is also a world knowledge capital. Nine of the ten largest global ICT companies have offices in Dublin, as well as nine of the ten global pharmaceutical corp corporations. It is therefore, I hope, a fitting venue for the World Library and Information Congress. It's a modern and dynamic and compact city full of youthful exuberance and general exuberance that I hope you will enjoy. Easy to get around and full, I hope, of people who will give you a warm Irish welcome. I hope you will also have the opportunity to visit other parts of our country. My foreign minister is from Cork, uh, who they like to describe as the real capital of Ireland, so I should def definitely exp express that. And my colleague Michelle is from Galway, so we have lots of competing pressures here, but I hope that you get to enjoy other parts of, of our country as well. I know that the National Irish Committee, of whom we are so proud, will work tirelessly to make the 2020 conference an enjoyable congress, which, as you have said earlier, will make WLIC 2020 an enjoyable congress, which will inspire, engage uh, the global in library and information services sector and enable the sh sharing of experiences and the exchange of information on best practices and also connect colleagues from across the world. I want to congratulate Gloria, the outgoing president, for her excellent words, for all the honorees this evening, and also to look forward to welcoming the new president, and I wish her well to Christine McKenzie, in your efforts. Plan your trip now and bring as many friends and family as you can, and enjoy the visit. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, and I invite now the Irish National Committee for the Congress 2020 to the stage. Please join us here. Dave Accordia, K. 
Kalispera. It's more an honor, August and pleasure, Dom, er son common Larlan Heron, Kura Kurov, Quig Argodal, and Lakia, and the Ishak and Blean Shakuing. Gyalami Div, you made Kodal Untuk, Sparulagus Faltuk, a Gwiv, Nur Hagenshiv. Takhal or Aaron, er on Vlatu a Tate, a Gwing Masrade Nakwil, our Ninthshire, He. Augusta Ahas Okri, er Vlakia, Larlani, O Fud on Dowan, a Vet and Argahar Untuk, Gurv Mila Mahagwiv. F. Caristo Poli. In the true spirit of internationalism, Cahill then introduced Greek and uh, Irish to you all, and we, we look forward to in introducing you all in Dublin next year to more and more Irish. Hello, IFLA. I am chair of the Irish National Committee. So on behalf of the committee and of the Live View Association of Ireland, it is my honor to invite you all to Dublin next year. We Irish are known for our warm hospitality, if not our warm weather, and Dublin is delighted, Dublin is delighted to have this opportunity to host librarians from all over the world in our wonderful city. We assure you that when you come to Dublin, you will have a great conference and more important, you'll have a great time. We look forward to seeing you all and all your colleagues next year. Thank you. As president of the Library Association of Ireland, it is a huge honor for us to host IFLA WLIC 2020. Irish libraries and Irish librarians are beyond words with excitement, and in our profession, librarians are rarely beyond words. On behalf of my Irish colleagues at home and on stage, I extend a warm and welcoming invitation to you all. Come to our special country and to our dynamic and multicultural capital, Dublin and I promise you a Cade Mila Foilte, a hundred thousand welcomes. Thank you, Ifla. Thank you, Athens. And see you in Dublin next year. F. Carisi, F. Carisi, Polly. Hello. I'm speaking from the National Library of Ireland in Dublin, a UNESCO city of literature, the home of Oscar Wilde, James Joyce, and four Nobel laureates for literature. Dublin is also home, of course, to the iconic old library of Trinity College and its Book of Kells, and a number of other world-class libraries. Other well-known attractions in the city include outstanding cultural institutions, all centrally located and accessed free of charge plus classic architecture, parks and open spaces, Temple Bar and the Guinness Storehouse. Dublin itself is a vibrant English-speaking capital city in a liberal European country with an open society, a city and country that are easy to access and easy to get around, and which hosts more than 10 million visitors every year. I congratulate the Library Association of Ireland in making this bid, and I fully support their initiative. Indeed, there is widespread support for the IFLA World Library and Information Congress to come to Dublin, support from libraries across all sectors, from the National Tourist Board and from other government bodies. So, delegates are assured of Cade Mila Fulce 100,000 welcomes.
We are made of a million welcomes. We are tradition and we are innovation. We are altogether easy. Easy to get to, easy to get around, and easy going to. We are one city, alive with ideas. We are Dublin. And we are waiting for you. We are so excited to go to Dublin and I want to just to say we are also extremely thankful that you are organizing the Congress in just in one year. This is really a great, great support. And I'm sure we will see all of you in Dublin, or not? Colleagues, we are near at the end of this session. I guess we had a fantastic Congress here in Athens and I would like now to welcome the co-chairs of the IFLA World Library Information Congress 2019, Christina, Filippos and Alexandra to present the 2019 Congress vote of thanks. Learning from each other, working together, sharing experiences, and networking, this is IFLA. And I think we did all very well with all of that in Athens 2019. But, <laughs> but we did more than that because we also had fun at the cultural evening and I'm sure you had some fun around Athens. Preparing this conference has been a great experience for all of us members of the National Committee. Many thanks to all the, my colleagues for this wonderful work and their contribution. Uh, let's keep up the good work so you, we can actually move forward the libraries of Greece. Let's try not to lose the momentum. And now this, this is also a time to thank the volunteers once again. Thank you very much for your wonderful contribution. We are all volunteers. And now this is a time to wish good luck to uh, our new president, Christine McKenzie, and good luck to Dublin. And uh, we are going to have a wonderful conference there too, I'm sure. Good luck. And we would like to thank Gloria and Gerald once again. And uh, now Philippos is going to present his, our present to Gloria, and uh, he will explain what the present is. Yes. One year ago, I Don't promised think. you to find symbolism because, because these days we need symbolism. I don't know if you find it, but I have to close the seminar, the, the Congress, with a symbol gesture. So, Gloria, starting from you. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Thank Here. you. Take so, that. <laughs> give, give, give the, give yeah. the base. Wow. This is a faithful replica wow. of a dove uh, made of marble. This is a replica of marble. Found in uh, the area of Daphne in Attica. This is from the 
Archaeological Museum of Athens. But the dove, this dove from marble, was dedicated to the goddess of love, Aphrodite. Wow. <laughs> no, no. I have to explain. This is not what you, want, you need, you think. In order to be a librarian, you need to be in love with your job. Yeah. That's why we in IFLA are in love with other jobs. We love our people. We love the nature. We love everything in this universe. That's why we are IFLA. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Thank you. I can stop. Very nice. Yes. Thank you, thank you. And uh, now, actually, I'm going to hand the same present with the same symbolism to Christina and wish all the best. All the best. All the best. Because we are going to work together. <laughs> And now, because actually Christina has worked for a long time with Gerald, she's the one to hand the present to him. <laughs> Dear all, I want to uh, say thank you, all of you, for the uh, very uh, successful conference in Athens. Mr. Leitner. Just one. <laughs> I'm really very thankful, but I would say I don't deserve it, not it deserves EFLA stuff. It will be at our office. And now I would like to ask uh, Philip Cohen to come over here and um, get his present and our good wishes for next year. Philip Cohen, could you please come over? Okay. Yeah, could you please come over? Our very best wishes for a very successful conference in Delhi. In, uh, Dear Greek colleagues, thank you for wonderful days in fantastic Athens, Greece, in such a beautiful, vibrant, and interesting city with such a great history where democracy was born, where the first public library was founded, and it was really the perfect place to hold the World Library Information Congress 2019. Dear all, this was a really special Congress, a defining moment in IFLA's ongoing development. This was really a special Congress because we launched the IFLA strategy 2019 to 2024, a strategy that is unique, 
both in its development and its delivery. You have been the key to the development of our strategy. You are also the key to its success. Our strategy is a call to action. Give a strong answer to the call. Just as EFLA works to inspire, to engage, to enable, and to connect you, we need you to inspire, to engage, to enable, and to connect those around you. This is your chance, this is your opportunity. Use this opportunity, became, become an active part of the global movement we are creating. And you can proudly say, I was there when it started, here at this historical World and Library Information Congress 2019 in Athens, Greece. I thank all of you for this wonderful Congress, the Greek National Committee, all these engaged volunteers, Our exceptional president, Gloria Perez Salmeron. Our governing board. And our extremely hardworking IFLA headquarters staff, which we got this. Yeah. And of course, all of you who made with your contributions and energy this conference to earn such an unforgettable World Library Information Congress 2019. Many thanks to all of you. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you for all your work, all your passion. We really are thank you to you. It's very nice to live in a kissing society. This was one of the comments that uh, Chris McKenzie told me when we were in Buenos Aires in my second president meeting. Because people there, they're always meeting and kissing each other. And this is very nice. So, the time has now come to my hand to over the presidency to Chris McKenzie. And I now invite Chris again to join me on the stage. Chris, it has been such a privilege for me to be your president. In handing over this gobble, I'm also symbolically handing over to you the stewardships of IFLA and the international library community. I know it will be in good hands, absolutely, uh, with you and your president, and I, I wish you the very best, any success for anything that you will do and you encourage in your presidency. I invite you to give, deliver your first acceptance speech. Dear colleagues, dear friends, good afternoon, or it's really getting to be good evening, isn't it? Kalispero. I am so happy, so proud, and so delighted to be standing here as the incoming president of IFLA. In Australia, it is customary to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we meet. I was born in the Kurnai region in Australia and if I were attending a meeting there, I would pay respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Today, I would like to acknowledge our indigenous colleagues from around the world and highlight that the United Nations has declared that this year is the year of indigenous languages. Firstly, let me introduce myself and tell you something about me. My childhood was spent on a dairy farm in Victoria, Australia, where I was the eldest of eight children. I rounded up and milked cows, fed calves and mucked out the dairy. 
My aunties, who lived down the road, gave me two great loves, reading and cooking. The country school I attended had an excellent library. And at an early age, my auntie Sheila introduced me to the Mafra Public Library. It was a treasure trove for me. And I devoured books as a child. I just loved escaping into other people's worlds. When it came to choosing a career, it wasn't that difficult, especially as I knew I didn't want to be a nurse or a teacher, which were the other options for a girl back in those times. I moved to the big city, went to university, and ended up a librarian. And for over 40 years, I've been practicing as a public librarian and have managed three library services. I cannot imagine that any other career could have suited me so well or given me so many opportunities. Three events have really defined my professional career. In 1990, I took off with my family for a six month to do a job exchange at Baltimore County Public Library in Maryland. To call it eye-opening would be an understatement. Baltimore County was led by one of the world, library world's great disruptors, the late Charlie Robinson, and it totally changed my way of thinking about libraries. Two years later, I took, undertook a management course, which provided me with a great many tools, and as well, one of the most significant things I have done. The optional subject was simple, do something you don't think you can do. So, I parachuted out of an aeroplane at 3,000 feet by myself. After that, I figured I could do anything. The third thing that happened to me was that I was selected to be part of the Bertelsmann Foundation's International Network of Public Libraries. This was in the early 2000s, and I continue to feel the impact of that amazing opportunity through to today and my closest friendships. It is why I joined the Metropolitan Library section, why I joined the governing board, and why I'm standing here before you today. It is a wonderful time to be involved with IFLA and to be your president. I am honored to have worked with three presidents and two secretary generals during my time on the governing board. And I would like to acknowledge today two people who have received fellowships. Donna Sheeda is a wonderfully smart, loyal and determined woman and generous in her support. Deborah Jacobs has made an awesome contribution to the library field and also to IFLA, a contribution that has enabled this transformation of IFLA that we see and through the le legacy grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and I'm so proud to call her my friend. Jennifer Nicholson has been supportive and encouraging for many years and laid the foundation for where we are today. Our Secretary General, Gerald Leitner, is the architect of the global vision and the new strategic framework that has been launched at this conference. And our immediate past president, the incomparable, glorious Gloria Perez Salmeron, whose warmth, passion and love of life has brought energy and joyfulness to the role. Hola, Gloria. And so to my agenda over the next two years. I'm really looking forward to working with the new governing board to implement the strategic framework. It is both ambitious and achievable. It is truly our strategy. We all own it. So many people, so many of you here today have contributed to that plan through the Global Vision Project and the Ideas Store, and I hope you recognize your input. My presidential theme is let's work together. Collaboration is at the heart of our profession. It's in our DNA. We must work together to make the library field strong. And there were some wonderful examples described in my president-elect session yesterday. And we almost also must work with like-minded organizations, those that share our goal 
to strive for a sustainable future for our world. Our strong and united library field can make even more impact when we amplify our voice through strategic and powerful partnerships. Over the next two years, we have important work to do. We now have our strategic framework, and so over the next year, we need to ensure that IFLA's structure enables the strategy. This will involve all levels of IFLA, the governing board, the professional units, and the strategic committees. I hope that the experience of the global vision encourages and reassures you that this will be a truly consultative and inclusive process. The other big piece of work we will be engaged in this coming 18 months is the publishing of the new trend report. I'm really looking forward to this new edition and being better able to understand where both our world and our profession are heading. It is very special to be meeting here in Athens, often described as the first known democracy in the world. President Barack Obama delivered a speech in 2016 at the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Cultural Centre as part of his state visit to Athens. He spoke about democracy, and I quote, in all our communities, in all our countries, I still believe there's more of what the Greeks call philotimo, love and respect and kindness for family and community and country, and a sense that we're all in this together with obligations to each other. Philotimo, I see it every day, and that gives me hope. Because in the end, it's up to us. It's not somebody else's job. It's not somebody else's responsibility, but it's the citizens of our countries and citizens of the world to bend that arc of history towards justice. And that's what democracy allows us to do. That's why the most important office in any country is not president or prime minister. The most important title is citizen, end of quote. We know that libraries are essential for democracy, for access to information, for freedom of expression, for, for supporting citizens to live to their full potential for the world's sustainable development. Every day, libraries make a difference to people's lives and they make society a better place. Let's work together to make libraries as powerful and as good as they can be. Thank you. Dear colleagues, again, our thanks to all involved in staging this Congress and to all participants. I now formally close the 85th IFLA World Library and, Inv in and Information Congress and look forward to seeing you all in Dublin in 2020.